In this segment, we're gonna to continue to talk about electrochemistry. And what we're gonna be doing is taking that information about standard potential, standard reduction potentials, and using it to, um, what second? Predict the direction of spontaneous reactions from standard electron, uh, electrode potentials. Okay, so uh, predicting the spontaneity of redox reactions. So substances at the top with large positive standard potentials tend to undergo reduction. They're good oxidizing agents. Substances near the bottom that have large negative, uh, large and negative standard uh, uh, potentials tend to undergo oxidation. They're good reducing agents. Any reduction reaction, this is a, a key point here that you want to use, any reduction reaction is spontaneous when paired with the reverse of any reactions listed below it on the table. And that's a, just another way of saying that the uh, cell potential of that reaction would be positive because if you've got something on this point of the list, then if it's something that's lower on the list, it means it has um, or more negative, uh, if you flip it around and add it, that makes the total of the two more positive. So it's just another way of keeping track of positive versus negative. So here, for example, uh, we've got copper two plus uh, and it's, it's, oxida, it's reducing uh, to, to form copper, uh, uh, copper solid. And that has a, um, a standard potential reduction of 0 0.034 volts and zinc uh, has a, um, a reduction potential of minus 0 0.76. So if we combine them together, what we'd see since uh, zinc is further down than copper, that if we oxidize zinc and uh, react it with copper, where copper is reducing, that would have a positive potential. Uh, yes, yeah, so zinc oxidizing and copper reducing is spontaneous with a standard cell potential of 1.10 volts, whereas the opposite, copper um, oxidizing and zinc reducing is non-spontaneous. It has a standard cell potential of minus 1.10. So that's what you want to do. You want to find something that's more negative, uh, flip it around, and then that, re that total reaction will happen. So uh, predicting whether a metal will dissolve in acid. This is a, a very common uh, problem of interest. So metals whose reduction half reactions are listed below the reduction of H plus to H2 in the standard reduction potential table, those dissolve in acids. So metals that are listed above do not dissolve in acids. Uh, and uh, so for example, if you put zinc in with uh, an acidic solution, you will actually dissolve the zinc. You'll produce H2 gas. You'll see it bubbling off and you'll get zinc two plus ions going into solution. Uh, the electrons will be moving from the zinc to H2. Uh, and it's important that uh, it's nothing to do with the concentration of acid per se. It's what, how the H plus can react. It's a redox problem, not really an acid base problem. Uh, you don't have H pluses moving from, from uh, molecule to molecule. You have H reacting with excess electrons from the metal to create H2. Uh, almost all metals will dissolve in nitric acid. Uh, and part of it is because of the acid, but also uh, because of redox reaction. Nitrate in acidic solution uh, will reduce to form nitrous oxide and water. And so um, what we get very commonly is that that is where the electrons go. The electrons go into reducing the nitrate. Uh, it's the nitrogen that's reduced rather than the H. So, um, so that reduced almost all metals, but there's some metals that won't, uh, won't get reduced. Turns out the gold and platinum dissolve in a combination of nitric acid and HCl and hydrochloric acid. We'll look at that at the very end once we've learned a little more about reaction equilibria and uh, electronic uh, and, and uh, uh, standard, uh, standard potentials. So um, let's, let's look at the, uh, the table to understand this a little bit more. Look at our table of standard reduction potentials. So um, let's go to that. And so let's see, uh, where's hydrogen? So hydrogen's here. So if it's anything below that, it will react. Um, you flip this around to get an oxidation and you get it, um, you flip this around, uh, you'll get a positive uh, uh, energy, you get a positive elect uh, electrode potential here. So combine it with anything below, iron, lead, whatever, uh, you will get a reaction happening with acid. Uh, whereas if you have something up here, then uh, you know copper, it won't dissolve copper because copper has uh, a higher uh, um, reduction half reaction potential. Uh, now let's look at nitrate. So nitrate is above silver, iron, copper, 
Uh, and so it will dissolve those because you'll get a reduction there. Notice that uh, gold, uh, platinum is not in here, but I believe platinum's, uh, I looked it up, at about point, uh, 1.20 is, is the platinum, um, of the platinum uh, reduction, uh, half reaction standard potential. So gold is not gonna be dissolved by nitric acid, but uh, silver is and um, copper is. And so this one, reason why these metals are so highly prized is that they tend not to dissolve in things because they are, because they have a very high uh, uh, reduction potential. They have a high tendency for the ions to combine with electrons and it's hard to pry those electrons off. In the same way that it's hard to pry electrons off of fluorine and chlorine, it's hard to pry electrons 